I'm going to check it. Let's check it now. Yeah, not even close. Well, the otherwise it fits nice. Okay, it's pretty obvious. Sometimes you can't see it. It's pretty obvious we're not even close here. Snug at the back. So we might use up a great deal of the length of this getting it to fit. So what we want to do is work towards the back of it. Establish parallel here. Oh, we're pretty close to parallel. But we're going to use up most of our batten. Which is why we make it long. Here's a, a trick. This is an important trick because you can't always see why it's not moving. Appears tight on both ends. Try and lift it at that end. So it's tight, but you see here I can lift it. So this taper is still not correct. I have to take off more in this section here. So we've got that one. Some utilitarian work. This little gap piece would still be functional. But we can correct that. Um, the easiest way is to plane some off the bottom, but that has repercussions. I mean, if this dimension is absolutely critical, that of course is not acceptable. Um, you plane some off the bottom of this, but this will advance because the dovetail is tapered this will advance the uh, batten, and that may be then the batten is too short. So, whoops. Make sure you get the bottom. See how well that works. We don't want to take off any more. And we have to one or two more strokes. Yeah. 
much corrected. The residual that's left, there's a tiny bit left, is because the cut slightly stepped out. Which means that this shoulder right here is not parallel to the top or 90 degrees to this surface here. And that's sure. And there's a little bit of dirt in there. So that can be corrected one of two ways. We bring in the side rabbit. And try and get in there and just get oh yes, nicely getting the corner. Which is partially where it's hanging up. Got it. When you're tapping that in, make sure you're keeping pressure on it because you can drive it in. You can drive it in, not fully seated down, which we want to do. Too bad. You'd like to have this ramp as wide as possible, inch and a half, uh, possibly more, one inch is a minimum, um, and that's if you're using, I usually use a, the block plane, the small block plane and not the larger planes. Uh, also a restriction is many moving filister planes um, have a, a definite limitation in the width that they'll cut. Either the blade's one inch or the fence doesn't move uh, that far. And as it turns out, the moving filister plane that I have only has a one inch capacity. I've had this for years. Uh, so I've kind of adapted to it. Now I'm going to plane in a tapering ramp. It's going to taper up to the minimum cut up here and down about a half of an inch here or so on this plane. Uh, this is uh, once you get your brain start working would be difficult to jig up. It's possible. Uh, but it's pretty fast to cut this with the rabbit plane, with the moving filster plane. So let's make a start. This is my Japanese moving filster plane. Um, cut smooth, accurate, a little problematic on the design. These wing nuts periodically shift their position. 
and get in the way of the fence. And it has this limitation uh, in its capacity, though the blade is a little bit wider. I might be able to get another quarter inch if I fit another fence to it. You don't really need the cutting spur, but it's set to go right now. So. Again, a tapering cut. So we start at one end. To get the taper, start with a pretty short stroke, probably less than that. And in fact, I'm probably going to want more taper than that, so I want to be taking short strokes down towards the end. But you want to lengthen those out as you go. You don't want that to be rounded. So have you got that jig figured out yet? So once I get the taper established, I can just make full length strokes. I think I want a little more taper. Now there's not many planes that can make a wider cut, as I said earlier. Uh, there's some new, uh, uh, the jackrabbit plane can make a two inch and something cut. I recently got a skew blade block plane. This fence is set up to this one here. Uh, you could use this, and this will make a cut up to an inch and a half. Oddly enough, with both freshly sharpened blades, this one has more resistance. I don't know why. It might be the uh, cast iron sole. So that's an option that would give you an inch and a wide, inch and a half wide. Well, I'm putting this taper on here, and I'm going to make a little more taper right now. A few more shortcuts down here to reduce the wear in one single spot on the blade if you're cutting narrow work. If you're trimming off narrow work, it'll kind of burn a hole in the edge, and it'll be much deeper than just a dull edge. So what we want up here is this has to be at least as deep has to get to catch the blade it can't be where part of the uh, plane uh, sole is exposed there so we're pretty much there and then with the height of our fence here yeah we're pretty much we're pretty much there let's back the blade off a little bit. And try and finesse this cut. Now, there's some... I'm sure there's some arguments going on as to the position 
of the blade itself in relationship to the side of the plane in relationship to the spur. Um, if there wasn't a spur, you need to set the blade slightly wide of the side of the plane, 64th or less. Uh, it's not set flush, which is uh, projecting the blade seems counterintuitive since this is your reference plane. But I think it happens because there's a little bit of uh, compressibility in wood when you cut it and it springs back just slightly. That very slightly slight spring back on each cut tends to push the plane away and cause it to drift. And also, it's not the side of the rabbit is not being sheared, it's being kind of torn away by the point here. There's no actual shear over here on um, when you're not using the spur. Now it's debatable, this relationship to the spur, and sometimes I think the blade can even project slightly beyond the spur, uh, but start it flush with the spur and see how your cut goes. And uh, if you're drifting away, uh, have the blade project slightly. If you're tearing it up, then the blade is definitely projecting beyond the cut. This is a problem with almost all types of rabbit planes, is clogging. On the skew bladed, we often get clogging. This hole can pack so tightly, you have to take a few minutes to clear it with some utensil that's not gonna damage the blade. On uh, shoulder rabbit planes, we've got a bigger opening. Uh, but we still get collection. If you're doing nice long shavings, it'll pack in that opening tight and you will spend several minutes trying to get that shaving unpacked. Uh, this is pretty nice. Uh, we still sometimes get clogging down at that very point, which is doing so much of the work. Or the shaving will come up and if it's a nice continuous shaving, oftentimes it'll uh, accordion in there very neatly and then eventually jam the plane. So you have to keep your eye on it. You usually can't do too many strokes before you have to clear the plane out. So I've backed the blade off a little bit. We're cutting up into the um, grain, uh, which is a problem if I had the other handed plane. I could cut going the other direction and reduce the issue with tear out. Now you want to check this ramp for square. And this looks pretty good. You want to check it all along there because it can twist. You can also use two squares. Um, something to this effect. And this will magnify. Now I'm showing here, it's tilting out a little bit. And tilting out a little bit. Tilting out a little bit. So let's take a cut favoring the inside. Let's see if that improved it. That's very nice. Very good. So now we have to cut this off. Um, so we drive it home, mark it. I'm airing on the slightly long side. So Japanese style, I'm going to cut it in the round. I'm working against the bench stock. Keeping the saw cut in the cut, I'm cutting down the face on the line. This really helps. Helps you get a square cut.
There you go. So, a couple little details we want to do. We want to chamfer the back of this off. Doesn't have to be that much. And then it actually doesn't hurt to take and just relieve this back a little bit. Thirty second or so. like that. Missed it a little bit there, but functionally it's not going to be a problem. So after you've got that uh, finessed out, you can come back and square it up. And we still have some compressibility there. Let's see. So now. Yep, right. Nice and tight, and it's uh, good to go. About like that. So you have pretty fine control over the length of your pieces that you're planing off. I've been experimenting with this skew-bladed rabbit plane, getting a little more sheer cut on the pieces. Um, it's nice. It works well. I haven't seen an absolute distinct advantage of this plane over this one. Basic Stanley. Or I often use uh, the Veritas larger plane just because it has slightly more capacity. Despite the size of the ramp, you can still rock the plane a little bit, so it's always user input. You should check everything with a square. Your blade could be slightly out of square in adjustment. Check it along the length. You can check it this way too, off your fence back here. Uh, you may have to tweak your positioning or your stroke of the plane in order to get it definitely square. But a beautiful appliance for controlling the length and smoothing and squaring up the ends of pieces.